no matter what is happening in Nigeria or anywhere in the world where you see yourself, as long as you have Jesus in your life, the worriness will not over, it will not overtake you. It will not swallow you. Those things that you worry about, they will come and go. They will surely come and go. They will not see your end though. I said they will not see your end. But you will see their end. Can you say better amen? Yeah. Hallelujah. Because Jesus knows very well that a lot of people are worried. Their worriness is so much that you don't know where to help them and where to come from. Their worriness is too much that they cannot even do any other thing than to worry. And worriness is a disease. Worriness can bring depression. Worriness can bring mental problems. Worriness can bring deformity. Worriness can bring what is called stroke. Worriness can even make you poor. Worriness can cause you to lose your life. So that is why the major prophet of God has been commanded by God to tell you not to worry. I said, don't worry. I said, don't worry. I said, don't worry. God will solve the problem. Your amen is not enough. As I'm speaking, God will solve the problem. They mark you to die. That death they mark for you will return back to the person. They mark you to be poor. The poverty will go back to sender. They make you to cry. The cry will go back to sender. They want to see you frustrated. The frustration is going back to sender. They want to see you in pain. The pains are going back to sender. They want you to feel depressed. You will never be depressed. Lay your hand on your head. Say, my father, my father. I am secured. In Christ Jesus. I am secured. In Christ Jesus, therefore, all my persecutors, they will all stumble and fall. They will stumble and fall in the name of Jesus. You don't need to worry because worriness cannot help you for anything. Landlord, come and serve you later. Pack out of my house. Because of that letter, you cannot even eat food again. You will cook the best food you like to eat. You have your spoon. You want to start eating. And the landlord say, pack away. And all of a sudden, appetite gone. You cannot eat food again. Some people in Nigeria has packed their loads. They are already in Ghana. Even though in Ghana, they are there doing nothing. They are there in Ghana. Have no job there. They are there look, listen to the news. Oh, uh -huh. let us see. If it say fire go catch Nigeria tomorrow. Uh, if it say the war won't start. Uh, the way it's going now, Nigeria will fight a war. Praise God. Not when major prophet is in the country. I said, not when the major prophet is in the country. Anybody that misbehaves, God will hold the person responsible. Whether you are a president, you are a governor, you are whatever, you misbehave, God will hold you responsible. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. God is interested in everything that is happening to us. And whatever will happen, will happen. But the devil will never succeed. I said the devil will never succeed. I said the devil will never succeed. They like let them bring everything possible. At the end, God will give us victory. Your amen is not enough there. Then depression are killing people. Some say, oh, the way dollar is going, I better sell everything I have in the shop and buy dollar and keep. Brother, if you buy dollar and keep, you are tying yourself down. Use your money. Continue business. Because we have a God. Our God is a God that never sleeps. Amen. We have a God. Our God is a God that can never slumber. Amen.
That's why a songwriter wrote the song. He said, my God that I worship never sleep. So, what am I saying? What I'm saying, our God never sleep. Nor what? Nor slumber. Amen? Our God never what? He don't sleep nor slumber. Then why will you allow depression to finish you? Why will you allow depression to finish you? Why will you allow the happening of the nation to put high BP on your blood? That which you don't have today. Brother, if you have faith and belief, tomorrow will not pass by. You will have them. I said tomorrow will not pass. You will have them. Tomorrow will not pass. You will have them. That which is not available now will be available tomorrow. You are not, I, I'm not hearing you well. Hey, Makatabo Shaladabada. That which you don't have now, you have it today. Any problem that comes, as far as my God is concerned, He will swallow it. If you don't have children, receive your children now. If you don't have money, begin to receive your money now. Whatever you don't have, begin to receive it now. In the name of Jesus Christ. So, what am I saying here? What I'm making clear is that the people that worry a lot are causing disadvantage for themselves. Now, you, you, I understand. Amen? I what? I understand. I know how it feels when you are, you want to eat rice with salad and fried chicken. And then you, you, you calculate what is in your pocket. What is in your pocket cannot buy chicken, but can only buy crayfish. Eh? Instead of chicken, you are buying what? Crayfish. Amen? Amen? I know how it feels. But listen to me. When God did not allow you to buy chicken, means that crayfish is the best for you at that moment. Hello? I said hello? If God, you have prayed, oh God, I am living in one room, I want duplex, you have prayed and prayed, one month pass. You have not seen the money to pack to duplex, two months pass. As far as God has not done it that time, means that it is not yet time. Eh? But what you need to do is to remind God what you are asking him. That's what the Bible says. Give him no rest. Trouble him. Let him know what you want. If he did not do it today, he will do it tomorrow. Rado Sheken Tabaya. Today, people are going to become millionaires. One thing I love about the prophetic gifting in my life is that anything I say with this mouth, heaven will have no choice than to bring it to pass. Eh? Huh? Every pain that makes you depressed is gone. Whatever makes you get frustrated is over. In the name of Jesus. Because we have a God that can never fail. That's why Jesus called all the disciples. He said, sit down. They sat down. He started teaching them from the beatitude. Eh? From the what? From the beatitude. He started from the beatitude and they entered into the lost prayer. From the lost prayer, he burst into what is called the cares and the affairs of life. That was why he started in the book of Matthew chapter 6. Look at 24. He said, he, said, he said from 24, he said, no man can serve two masters for either he will hate the one and love the other or else he will hold on to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon at a go. Look at 25. He said, therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor for yet your body what ye shall put on. 
is not life more than meat and body than raiment. 6, 26. Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barn. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Praise God. Jesus begin to teach the people and compare them to the animals in the bush and the best of the air. The best that fly in the air, none of them has farm. Do they have farm? Eh? Is there any of the best in the air that have shop in Alaba? Eh? What of shop in Threadfair? Is there any of the animals that have somebody that employed it? Did you employ any birds in the air? Eh? Do you employ the doves that are flying in the air? Did you employ them? You did not employ them. But they are eating well. They wake up in the morning, they go out and feed very well and return. Even when they give birth, animals give birth more than human beings. Two of us. Eh? One bird can give birth to five at a go. And after six months, it will give another one. Or after one year, it give another one. Sometimes animals like a, like, like, a, like, a, like, like, like a rat can give birth to 36 children at a go. Amen? Amen, oh. But those children they give birth to, none of them has died because of hunger. Eh? Now, the animals, the bears in the air, I'm not talking about uh, what the American, the Western world has turned animals to now have a hospital where they take animals to. It's because they're trying to give to the animals the food that human beings eat. And the food are not convenient for the animals. That's why the animals now become sick. Leave the animals in the bush. They eat what they eat in the bush. They can never become sick. Amen? Amen? And so, the animals does not have a, a, a hospital. They don't know what is called cancer. They don't know what is called blindness. They don't know what is called the pains. Whatever that come in a day, they face it. And they overcome it, they enter another day. Now, if you go to the jungle where you meet wild beasts and the other animals that are vulnerable, you will see animals like antelope, you see animals like, uh, like uh, all these uh, mini animals that cannot defend themselves. You see how lion will pursue them day and night. You see how they will run and run and run and fly. Lion is there pursuing them. Tigers are there pursuing them. Uh, pythons are there to swallow them. Wolves are there. Hyena, they are there. All the wild beasts are there to devour them. But when they see hyena, they run. They see wolf, they run. They see lion, they run. They see tiger, they run. Yet, they live their years, bear their children, pass on from one generation to another. Amen? God, who is able to keep them, is the same God that said, you are my children. You need to eat the tree of life. Amen? Amen? That was what happened in the Garden of Eden when the Adam and Eve ate the tree of knowledge of good and evil. After they ate that tree, their eyes opened to know evil and good. It caused them more harm. And God quickly said, hey, drive them away. Angel, go and drive them away. Because if they stay here, they will eat the tree of life and they will never die again. And they drove them out of the Garden of Eden. And they begin to wander up, up and down, tilling the ground, toiling here and there. But the grace of God that made Jesus to come, Jesus has made the availability of the tree of life. But you see, the tree of life, many people now have forgotten, they don't choose to eat it because they know that to eat the tree of life need what is called complete faith. Your faith must not have any loophole. You can never test that tree. Until your faith has been wholly fixed with him. So, I have eaten the tree of life. Eh? I have what? I have eaten the tree of life. I pray that God will give you that same tree. You will eat that tree spiritually in the name of Jesus. Because Jesus.
Jesus is everything that the world is looking for. We are looking for good governance. Two of us. The good governance is Jesus. We are looking for peace. The peace is who? Jesus. We are looking for protection. The protection is who? Jesus. Anything that it is you are looking for, Jesus is all and all the answer. Amen? Amen? But the problem here is the worriness. I pray for you today. Every worriness shall be taken out of your life. The worriness is already arrested by fire. You will never have that worriness again. The years that caterpillar and canker worm has eaten in your life is over. I need the thunderous amen. Your glory time is today.